Welcome in to the Hump Day edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller, excited to be with you again here today on November 15th. Thank you so much for stopping by. We're going to take a couple of minutes to set up this incredible weekend ahead of us. And then we're going to talk about the moon and hopefully scoot out of here maybe a little bit early today. But we've covered most everything that there is to cover, at least from the big macro perspective, except for this weekend. We are building towards Saturday. We've been building for over the last month. We talked extensively about this last week. We've talked about it again this week some. The Sun-Mars conjunction will be Saturday morning, early, early, 1241 Eastern Time, just after midnight. So really, this is a Friday night thing for most of the United States. But look, I mean, it's ramping up, yes, but we've been in the aspect range for quite a while, and we've been feeling the effects of this as the Sun-Mars were together, along with the South Node back in October. We've talked about it on Level Up. We've offset the energy. We've done about everything around here we can do except to let it collide, and then we'll get on the backside of it. But it's kind of a staged thing. So they'll collide on the 18th. That's the conjunction. And then by the 1st of December, they will start to pull enough apart that there's at least some space. They're not chokeholding each other. And then by the third week of December, they'll be plus a 10 degree orb. So they'll be out of range. So it will start lightening up. That's the great news. Will it go away after this 48 hours later? No. No, it'll still be. They're still plenty close, and they chase each other for the next several weeks. But we've covered that extensively well enough, and we know it's intense. We know it's shadowy right now, and it's an also phenomenal time to launch stuff. I had something new launch in my life just the last, oh, 10 days or so, and it's under this aspect, and it's awesome, and it's intense. I'm working hard on the new website where you'll have high timeline book suggestions and audiobook suggestions right at your fingertips. What do I want to read next? Boom, there will be some great ideas. You can move yourself forward. We're going to make it simple, easy, accessible. There's a lot of intense work going into that. So see, for every one of these aspects, you know, Pluto comes around. Boom, Pluto, death and transformation. But look, there are two sides of Pluto, of Saturn of Uranus, of all of them, and you get to choose which one you're going to play. And that's as simple as that with this kind of astrology. And if you don't think it doesn't play out like that, where people who choose one side or the other, go back to what Paramhansa Yogananda said, give me the most inauspicious time to start something based on an astrological chart, and I will make it successful. That's choice. So you can choose the shadow side of Pluto, And you can experience the destruction part, or you can choose the redemptive part. I had Pluto positioned in something the other day and took a look at it, and it was all about redemptive, regenerative, reconstructive, new beginnings. I mean, what? (laughs) That's malefic? Not around here. Now, there is one other consideration, and this will be on Friday, and then we'll talk about the moon to scoot on out of here for today. On Friday, because these two guys are so close, both of them trine Neptune Friday. Mars goes first. It will be at 3.35 a.m. Then the sun follows at 9.50 a.m. Both Eastern, all Eastern on this podcast, convert to your own local time. But that's Friday's business, trying to Neptune. I mean, get on your spiritual game. You want to talk about how to play this aspect? Neptune is about your connection to the home office on the positive side. It's lies, deception, and blurry vision on the negative side. Which one do you choose? And whichever side you choose, you'll have all day tomorrow to bask in it. Then Friday, the aspect will be sitting right on top of us, and we'll experience it then too. Then Sun-Mars will conjoin late Friday night, early Saturday morning, depending on where you are. But on the positive side of Friday, heightened spiritual attention, attuity, keenness, downloads, perceptions, visions, dreams, My advice would be to be very careful what you put into your body, either through your eyes, ears, or mouth. Keep the pipeline open to the home office as much as possible. Be careful who you're with. Make sure they're aligned and really bask in the fact that the channel is going to open up if you're there to receive. You know, I don't know if Neptune's stationing to change directions would be bigger than this trine with the Sun Mars. I think the trine is better. I don't know. What do you guys think? I can just tell you, I'm going to be lapping it up. (laughs) Thursday's going to be a good day around here.
Let's talk about the moon real quick as we wrap up for today. We have a void, of course, that begins this evening at five minutes until six Eastern time. And this is where we were talking about this lunar transit through Sagittarius ends with a square to Pluto. There are no remaining lunar aspects today that are noteworthy to take action on. And that last one at five till six Eastern is one to avoid. Then the void, of course, is for 8 hours and 45 minutes, and at a whopping 2.40 in the morning, the moon will enter Capricorn. Now, if you do want one little auspicious moment to lock on to during that transit, there are two considerations. One is, the Capricorn transit will end early Saturday morning with a conjunction to Pluto. So here we are again. We're not going to get away from Pluto following this for the next good little while, long time, year plus. So you can interpret the conjunction positively or negatively here, but mostly you have to first determine, is this situation Plutonian in some kind of way? If it somehow relates to Pluto, then tomorrow, Thursday at 547 Eastern. Now you'll need to, this is where you need to get your own chart, set it to your own time, but thereabouts, right in there a minute or two on either side, 547 PM Eastern the moon will trine Jupiter. So if you wanted to play with this and just see what happens if you take an action that, again, it has to be under a Plutonian kind of umbrella. But if you wanted to play that with a positive, you've got to trine with Jupiter tomorrow afternoon. So hey, we're all playing. It's just energy surfing. So if you wanted to play with it, there you go. All right, back tomorrow. We will continue this conversation. I know you guys are loving it. Thanks for the comments. And we'll keep it going, you bet. It's going to be a permanent thing around here. We surf energy. Have a great Wednesday. I love you. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.